Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 27, Part 2. Sometime later, her most recent work of art finished, Luna felt some pony move through the shadows in her wing of the castle. A slight effort of will, and she could see the pony in question. Candace was approaching, with far more haste than expected, an unfortunate amount of paperwork levitating an aurora. Luna considered it might have been wise to at least indicate that she didn't need to carry it, as her night guard had already acquired a copy. Alas, she was not one of her own, she was one of Celestia's, so a certain amount of theatrics was expected. Candace glanced around as if looking for door guards, and advancing to the door lifting Huff to knock. More decisive than most, Luna thought, using her magic to open the door just before the Hoof would have connected. Luna knew she was playing up the theatrics, but such things were both expected and fun. The only thing in the now dark room the mare would be able to see would be Luna's glowing eyes. Candace almost didn't falter, recovering from the unexpected with reactions quick enough that most ponies would not have noticed there was a pause at all. She walked into the room calm and professional, but seemed to be concealing something. Luna, why is there a mare in here that has feelings for you, and why am I stuck behind a wall of shadows? Cadence mentally sent to Luna. She has one of Celestia's tools that have been looking all over for the RGIS files for me. Letting the glow of her eyes fade, she snuffed the light coming from Candace's magic. Luna closed the door and blanketed the room in total darkness so that her guest wouldn't be able to see anything at all. That's not the bit I'm interested in. What I want- Wait. I know her. She's the one who was considering pushing towards Twilight before I found out how uninterested your future wife was in having any relationship at all. Luna raised her eyebrow. Verily? So if it were not for my sister's meddling, my Twilight would be with this man? She sent to Cadence, making sure to keep her wondering about Candace's oracular ability to herself. Candace kept walking into the darkness like she still knew exactly where she was going, a twitch of her ears giving away how she was navigating. Luna deep in the darkness, absorbing all the sounds, leaving the space completely silent. Candace, despite the silence, advanced to almost the proper place before her desk to report. She deposited the stack of paperwork on the ground next to her. Luna observed her guest, watching for a reaction. Most ponies didn't last long in total silence, not even being able to hear their own breath or heartbeat. Candace's body relaxed, a content smile slightly forming on her muzzle. Luna blinked. That had not been a reaction she'd ever seen before from any but sleep-deprived these rolls. Why are you playing with her? Cadence asked. You thought that she would be worthy of Twilight, so we will find out. Luna responded. Luna? Cadence warned. If I break her, I will fix her. Candace waited a few seconds before her professional stance returned. Lieutenant Candace, reporting as ordered, your highness. She said, still unable to hear the sound of her own voice. Luna spent a moment considering before grinning. She leaned over her desk, getting into position, closing her eyes. Her magic dragged Candace through the shadows, depositing her victim right in front of her, almost muzzle to muzzle. Candace's wings snapped partially open, catching the slight breeze, her legs dropping down just enough to cushion her landing. Suddenly, she snapped open her glowing slit eyes, casting just enough light that Candace would be able to see the outline of Luna's muzzle. Luna was mildly annoyed at the lack of surprise on her victim's face, instead was the stoic look of some pony taking a test. Luna used her magic to pull the desk aside and circled Candace, trailing a single feather along her back. Luna could see the muscles fighting each other as Candace forced her wings to remain still. She altered the darkness to allow their voices to be audible to each other. Hmm. For once, your victim seems to be enjoying your performance as much as you are. But that's no excuse not to be careful with her. Cadence added. Pressing her muzzle next to Candace's ear, Luna whispered, Would you mind if I happen to steal you? Candace quietly but confidently replied, Whatever way you happen to need me, I would not be opposed. Curiosity was evident in her voice. That's a rather open-ended offer. Luna said, her voice sensuous and dangerous. A slight smirk on Candace's muzzle told Luna that she could take that however she desires, though the light shiver of desire didn't go unnoticed. You are a bold little one. Luna said, letting a hungry grin with just a hint of fangs be visible. She trailed a wing over Candace's back and wings again. Be careful, you're toying with her heart. Cadence warned. I'm aware. I know very well what her dreams are. Candace looked straight at Luna. No pony ever got anywhere by being timid. Well, with the exception of Fluttershy. Then she straightened up, being professional again. Luna moved closer, almost pressing her side against Candace, bending her neck and placing her muzzle almost close enough for a kiss. Why are you even with the Solar Guard? She purred. Trying to break her professional mask was proving to be entertaining in its own way. Luna observed as Candace inhaled a slow breath, taking in Luna's scent. I'm only on the Solar Guard because the Night Guard wasn't an option at the time. Had the Night Guard approached me, I probably would have said yes. Luna silenced the sudden ultra-high-pitched chattering of the concealed Night Guards in attendance with a slight flick of her wing. Oh, what a strange one you are. 
Luna said, embracing Candace with her wing fully, still looking into her eyes. She saw a genuine smile appear on Candace's face. You are wasted on my sister, Luna said, guiding her further into the darkened room. Candace let herself be led easily, seeming to be quite comfortable with the way things were going. The regulations and bureaucracy waste a lot of ponies. At least I can still do some good, so I haven't been completely wasted, outside of a couple of times. She replied. Would you appreciate the opportunity to be able to do... more? Luna asked seriously, not showing her eagerness, but letting a touch of seduction into her voice. You're not allowed to poach your sister, Silverguard. You know that, right? Cadence mentally admonished Luna. My sister owes me a bone, so yes, I can actually. Candace looked up at Luna. I would appreciate the opportunity quite a bit. I take it you can get me released from my solar oath? She asked with hope in her eyes. Tis but a triviality. Luna casually intoned. Candace smiled at that, then asked. Am I correct in thinking there would be a test to make sure I qualify first? And training after that? Luna looked down upon Candace. What makes you think there's only going to be one? She said with an amused glint in her eye. Fair point. The only thing I can promise you at this juncture is that I will perform at my best. Candace replied back. I have no doubt that you will if you want to avoid scars. Luna said with a pleasant smile. Candace replied, a hint of playfulness entering her voice. Would you prefer me without scars? Scars for learns tell a story. Scars from training can teach lessons. But scars from stupidity are just a mark that the stars decide to let you live. Luna said, considering the many scars that she would have if not for her regeneration. That is the absolute truth. I have quite a few of each, but I managed to reduce them down to just hairline ones. Luna let her eyes wander over Candace's body, selecting the largest scar. She trailed a feather along it, her left shoulder all the way down to her tail. Pray tell, what is this? Candace seemed to fondly recall. That was from grabbing a full out from under a falling cart. I was 14 at the time. I got slashed by the corner of the cart as I slid out from under it. That was muscle damage, skin laceration, and several ribs broken. Luna stroked along the scar again thoughtfully, wondering how it healed. Then there's a pony out there that has a lot to thank you for. Are you still in contact with them? She asked with curiosity. Looking sad and Candace spoke. No, I'm not. He died a few years after I saved him. His father is in prison due to fatal negligence. Let's just say that... That wasn't the only cart that had fallen at his warehouse. Luna paused. She never liked hearing of foals perishing. Mortal ponies had such a short lifespan in this life that cutting it any shorter was a tragedy. You have my sympathies. Luna said, all hints of games and tests gone, replaced with a solemn tone. Candace nodded and gave the cult a moment of silence. After that, she said, I was affected by it. Some of my first investigation leads were into criminal negligence cases. The end result was that the laws were tightened up and enforcement rose. At least some good came out of it. Luna retracted some of the shadows in the room, revealing some cushions in a comfortable corner. Removing her wing from Candace, she gracefully settled down. So, do you have anything you wish to know? This is the last chance that you will have to decline my offer. She said, extending her wing, inviting Candace to make herself comfortable. Candace laid down, facing Luna. I know that yourself and Twilight are together. You seem to be making subtle invites for me to pursue. I have the desire to do so, but the last thing I want to do is come between either of you and your happiness. I fear what might happen if I did follow my desire. Would I cause a rift between you and Twilight? The first hint of worry showed on her face. That was not the question Luna was expecting. Flicking her eyes in the direction where Cadence was hidden, she could see her expression. She was one part smug because she was right, and two parts concerned about what might happen next. Luna turned her gaze back to Candace. With your dreams and how I have been... encouraging you, that was not what I expected you to ask. You have a level head and a heart that is willing to listen to reason. She said, leaning in closer. Candace tilted her head in curiosity, gesturing for Luna to continue. So if there were no consequences, what would your intentions be towards my twilight? With a calm surety, Candace replied. To see that she's happy. That's all I want for her. I hope that I can add to her happiness and yours. If I could accomplish that, then I would be thrilled. If I couldn't, then I would still desire that happiness for both of you. Is she being honest? Luna asked, despite the fact that she was almost certain it was true. Uh, you were going to have another of your pet night guards besotted with you? Yes, she is being honest. Even you can't be that dense. Her heart is too selfless to risk hurting another when trying to claim what she wants. Cadence lightly admonished. Are you sure you want to be one of mine and not one of Cadence's? Luna asked teasingly. Auntie! Candace showed a slight smile at the question. Honestly, 
I would prefer to be both yours and Twilight's, but I don't know if that's an option. I would even be there for Little Star in that perfect case. Naturally, with a marriage, our guards would become different units in the same force. As Twilight has no guards of her own, that means my night guard will be responsible in beholdens to both of us. Candace lifts her head a bit at this, her hope rising just a bit more. I would pledge myself to both of you without hesitation. I could only hope that Twilight accepts. Oh, I think she will. But you may end up playing test subject in her lab with your unique nature. I would welcome it, actually. I love learning about how the world and even my own body work. It was one of the ideas I had for a date, to ask if she wanted to discover new things about magic with me. Excitement and desire came into Candace's voice once more. I think at least intellectually, she will enjoy your company. Luna said, resting her head on her hooves. You might make for a guard that she would be willing to keep around. She would relish all the conversation and experiments you two could get up to. Luna shrugged her wings. Only time will tell if she will have any interest in you beyond that. Can you accept that? Being so close to some pony that you want and always being denied? Yes, I can. I have been prepared for the possibility of that for years. If all I can achieve is the genuine friendship with her, then that would be enough for me. If all I can get is a position as a guard, then I can let those feelings go. But if she did show interest, would I be free to return it? I would only ask that you don't accept her advances if Remain is on fire. Let her cool down and check again. Should you really be sharing all of this? Cadence mentally interjected. If in the highly unlikely event that Candace proves to be untrustworthy, she will wish that she did not live to regret it. So, where's the problem? Luna responded, and she could feel Cadence recoil from the deadly cold mental tone used. It makes you wonder how Twilight's gonna react with all this Candace stuff going on. She probably won't freak out or anything, but I'm guessing that she might be confused or concerned. Anyways, let's get on to our lovely donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe9852, Anton Norman, Stephen Bingham, Lime God 12, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Ponyman, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Scouchia, Leslie Perkett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Gets N A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Needs a Life, Milan Behenek, Lightning Cheese, and many more magical people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.